So was that uh, what what came from that? Was that just going from NHL caliber shooters down yeah. to like WHL? It's because that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is goalies. Yeah. If you play a high level and then go back down to a more mediocre, the shots are different coming in quicker. It's it's way different. And um, you know, I've always seen myself as a goalie that likes to rise to the occasion. Yeah. And you know, it was it's it was so new for me this year. I think I went up and down five times. Like, and so I'd get used to that and then get sent right back and be put in the game the next day. And I'm like, well, shit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that had a lot to do with it. And back then they were trying to change my game a little bit. They okay. wanted me to be more like aggressive and keep my patience where during that whole year, I was such an athletic guy, like just trying to slide back, be like Jonathan quick. And, um, you know, so I was trying to implement that. And when I figured it out, I got it going. But, uh, yeah, there's always new things you have to learn. Is there a guy that you try and emulate your game somewhere similar to, or are they trying to get you to look like a certain guy? Obviously, at 6'1", you're not the biggest goalie. You're not in a Vasilevsky that's going to fill the whole net every single time. But no, what, is there... to a 6'2", a little bit. So, they, okay, I like it. I, 6'1 is what they had on there. You know, we'll bump it up to 6'2". Yeah, yeah. They I'll, have put in, I'll put a complaint in. I'll put a complaint to it. NHL.com. Do it. <laughs> They're lying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, you know, Ben Jones is a guy that got drafted to the Vegas Golden Knights organization as well. Uh, I got to see him in the Ice Dogs uniform play. Those younger guys that you sort of got drafted in to the organization with, are you, uh, you got a good group there that very cohesive? Yeah. Um, Jones, he's a great guy. I, I get along with all the guys out of my draft year, really. And, um, you know, we're, we're a close group. I've bought a few shirts off Jonesy through the days. And uh, that guy loves his clothes. It's crazy. <laughs> He's got like a whole room just committed to his clothes. Really? Yeah. It's, it's that guy, that guy loves clothes. Um, yeah. I mean, they're all like, I don't know, like Vegas has a really good scouting group where everyone just seems like a good guy and everyone just kind of gets along with everyone. And, you know, there's no one being a dick or anything like that. So it's, you know, yeah, I, I'm happy where I am. And I think a lot of other guys are too. Uh, it's it's good to hear because a lot of some guys don't have that same uh, first couple of years experience in the show and oh, yeah. you know going through it can't it's not always uh, rainbows and daisies right uh, <laughs> another guy you played with uh, Dylan Dubé you played with him in Notre Dame and Kelowna um, what's what's that guy like now he's he's spent a couple of years with Calgary uh, got some good stories with him yeah no he's Dubes is a great guy he was uh, he was always the clown at Notre Dame like everyone everyone loved him he's he's a good guy. Um, you know, I spent a couple of weeks with him at his house in Con Conquerin. Can't remember when. I want to say it was over Christmas break at Notre Dame. Um, yeah, we've been buddies for a while. I snapped him last night after I heard about it. he was going to be asked asked about today on this podcast. And uh, if there's anything I wanted him to say, but um, no, he more commented about how he's growing out his hair and beard all quarantine. Yeah, but, I'm, I'm actually curious who's. Uh, we, we better see some good pictures from uh, athletes yeah. as far as who's getting the best quarantine beard going. Yeah, his is his is pretty crazy. He's been able to grow a beard since he was twelve, I think. So, oh, it's... I'm, jealous. I'm still working on it. <laughs> yeah, no, me too. But um, no, he's a good guy, and he's he's always been such a hard worker, man. Like he's he's always just dedicated to him, so dedicated to himself, and just getting better every day. And uh, to be able to play with guys like that and play against them when he was in Kelowna, that was just a whole another whole another thing. The guy had my number all the time. I hated it, but um. So yeah. are you when you're going through games like that and you know a WHL will sort of keep it to that when you were going through but you you play against similar guys or guys for multiple games do you kind of get an idea of what cer what certain guys will shoot where they'll shoot their tendencies is that something that you look at or you are you watching footage all the time or are you uh, more of a guy that likes to just react Yeah I, I like I like footage I like especially like when you're playing 59 games, it's, it's way easier. Like you play, we played Kelowna 10 times. Like yeah. it's, you get used to the guys on their team and what they like to do. I remember when Cole Lind was on Kelowna, this guy, he had my number more than Dubes. He would score on me every game we played. And he was like, he's my, he's my buddy. Like we get along. And there was just like, I'd, he'd get like four shots a game and three of them I'd have to make a good save. And then like, he'd just score and it like, wouldn't matter. And, um, I remember a game where I almost had a shutout against him. There was like a minute and 30 left and he scores. And he, he was just like that guy that just like wouldn't let me do it um, in the WHL. And I think he had my number more than anyone else. 
So did you shoot him a text after every game? Be like, hey man, you're hurting my draft stock. They fuck off. Like. Uh, we did. We did talk a couple times. I got him on. We talked on Xbox a couple times too. I've played Fort with them a few times.